This morning's text, John chapter 11, verses 20 through 25. John chapter 11, verses 20 through 25. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, your brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Ah. But Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. This is the reading of the Lord's word for the Lord's people. Thanks be unto God. What a powerful passage of scripture as the Lord is speaking to us in this morning that he is the resurrection and the life and he is speaking to us today that we shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. If I can submit to you as I tag the text with the subject this morning when Jesus steps in. When Jesus steps in. Now beloved this morning we understand that there is a criteria for when Christ steps in. We don't know how God is going to do it, but we understand that he operates on an entirely different level. God is too phenomenal. He's too sovereign to figure him out. We are human beings. We are spiritual, but he is omnipresent. He has all knowledge of the past, present, and the future. God is all-knowing. He is sovereign. He is our Savior, and we are his sons and daughters. God does what he wants to do without human permission. He is God, and he is God all by himself. The beautiful thing that we love about our God is that he invests in what he says. The Bible declares that God will not give his glory to another. We bask in the glory of God. And we can appreciate when God is moving in the midst of us. We must be reminded today, according to the text, That God is our creator and we are his creation. He is our creation and we are his children. He is our creator and we are the called and the chosen of God. We must be reminded, beloved, this morning that we must always stay submitted and surrender to him. Because he is God. I believe in this moment as we are reminded that God is in the blessing business. But we also must remind ourselves that we need God. We cannot function without him. It does not matter how educated we are or our pedigree or how much money we may have obtained. There is nothing that's more solid and secure than our Savior. We are solid because we walk with God. When God wants to stop a situation, he has the ability to maneuver how he will. He, beloved, as we are reminded in the text, he will let some things die right in front of us. I'm not talking just about dying in the natural, but sometimes the vision may tarry. But God said, wait on it because it shall surely come to pass. We are reminded in this moment 
that as we sit in the text and the tension of the moment, that Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. He was at the house hanging out with our Savior. And when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he did not rush, but took his time. How many of us are waiting for God to move? I've come to let you know that he's setting you up for a greater weight of glory. I know, beloved, at times we sit in the challenges of the day. And God will take his time. But he does not want us to panic. It is not an emergency for him. God wanted me to let you know that we that wait upon the Lord, that he shall renew your strength. God wants to tell us today that we cannot institute plan B. <laughs> Here in the text, as I submit to you, my first point, there is no plan B. That God said, trust him when you can't trace him. He said, take him at his word. When God speaks, it becomes life. And when God said what he said, he's going to do it exactly how he promised. God is telling us in the text to do not panic in this moment. God is reminding us that he's not moving because of our emotions. He's moving because he promised. He is not moving based on our emotions. He's moving because we are purposed. He is not moving because of our emotions. He's moving because we praise him. That's why I must declare to you that we don't have to wait until the battle is over. But we can shout the victory right now. Someone say when Jesus steps in. As I submit to you my second point, the Bible is right and your faith must stand. We are reminded, beloved, in the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He says the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. God wants us to know today that your faith must stand in this hour. That by faith, we must see that there's a way when there is no way. By faith, we must see provision being made for our houses. By faith, we have to see the breakthrough and the breakout. I don't care how big the problem is or how long it has existed. If God be for you, <laughs> he's more than that which is against you. We are reminded in this moment that God's promises are yes and amen. And God wants me to remind you today that all it takes is faith the size of the mustard seed. And you can command the mountains to move. He told me to let you know that we feel that some mountains are moving. Yes. By faith, we believe that the mountain is losing its hold. By faith, we know that we must hear the abundance of the sound of rain. God is telling us that he is stepping in. Oh, yeah, yeah. That God is shifting your situation and it's going to work out for your good he is reminding us in this text that we must stand on our faith the bible declares now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen in this moment we are at the closing of another year but god is telling us do not cast off your confidence, for it has a great recompense of reward. God is telling us in this moment that everything he promised, he's going to make it good. 
and everything that he promised that he shall bring it to pass. God is reminding us that he is stepping into your situation. God can fix every situation in your lives if you just allow him to step in. Here in the text, as we sit, Deacon, in the text, there is tension happening because Lazarus, which Jesus loved, now he is dead. And Jesus called him friend. He, Lazarus, is now gone. And Jesus told his disciples that we have to go to Bethany because my friend Lazarus is sick. But first, I'm going to allow him to sleep. Here in the text, the disciples said, well, we're waiting for you to move. But they reminded Jesus that it wasn't the type of sleep where Lazarus was scheduled to wake up. Lazarus was dead and Jesus wasn't in a rush. Some things that the enemy thought was dead, God is saying it was just asleep. Huh. Is there anyone in the sanctuary this morning that knows that God is awakening that which was asleep? See, I come to let you know that you've been going through your situation for a long time. And I know Jesus didn't rush. The bank account was on a negative balance, but Jesus didn't rush. You had a bad report from the doctor, but Jesus didn't rush. But God told me to let you know that he has all things under control. See, beloved, I understand that you may have been afraid. But God said he doesn't give us the spirit of fear. But of love, power, and a sound mind. I know that times are full of tension. But we have a savior that is moving on our behalf. Jesus wants to let us know that I am the I am. That I said what I said. And if I said it, I am going to make it good. Sometimes God will delay the situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. But God said that just because he delays it, come on, come on, come it doesn't on. mean that he denied it. Yeah. I've come to let you know yeah. that Jesus is stepping in. Yeah. See, beloved, this morning, yeah, yeah. all we need is one word from our Savior. And he is changing the situation. Yes, yes. One word from our Savior. That all things will be well. God told me to let you know. Yes. That he's turning things around for your good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, come he on. told me to let you know. Yes. To trust me when you can't trace yes, me. Yes, 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 yes. That God had you waiting for a long time. That Lazarus had the equivalent of being in the ICU. Yes, 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 yes. And I know that I know that I know come on, come on, come on. that God wanted to get the glory. Yes, yes. He told me to remind you of his word. Yes. That I was wounded for your transgressions. Yes. I was bruised for your iniquities. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him and by his stripes you are already healed do me a favor and say neighbor when jesus steps in is there anyone in the sanctuary that knows that jesus will step on the scene i know it appears that jesus was insensitive but he was up to something. And he was up to something good. I know that I know that I know. 
We ask God the question. Yes. Why does it take you so long yes. to move on behalf of the people that you love? Yes. Yes. I understand we ask the question. Oh, yes. And it makes us think that God is not coming. Come on, come on. But God told me to let you know yes. that he is stepping into your situation. Oh, yes. As I submit to you my third point, that Jesus called me out. Therefore, I'm back and I'm back real good. See, I've come to encourage you that you don't have to wait until the battle is over. But you can shout the victory right now. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that knows out of the abundance of the heart does your mouth speak i understand that people say it doesn't take all that but i've come to let you know that you must praise god on a promise you don't have to panic in this season just praise him for what he said i've come to let you know that Jesus is stepping into your situation and that the enemy is defeated and God is exalted. I understand that the enemy doesn't like this word, but I've come to let you know that it's already done in heaven. And as it is in heaven, it is here on earth. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that knows that Jesus will step in? I feel like our ancestor David. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Is there anyone that can give God praise? Because Jesus stepped on the scene. I come to let you know that your success is already secure. When the enemy came in like a flood, God said, I build up a standard against him. Is there anyone that will clap your hands and remind the enemy that he is under your feet? That God has authority and something is about to happen because Jesus stepped on the scene. My faith looks up to thee, thy lamb of Calvary. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that will give God good praise and encourage yourself in the Lord? That God told me to let you know that he's going to bring you through it because he's bringing you to it i might be in the valley but we must encourage ourselves in the lord i come to let you know that you're swimming against the tide and there are things going on that you may not understand but in the midst of a dying situation we have to let the enemy know that Jesus lives and we can face tomorrow. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that understands that God is stepping into your situation? He told me to let you know it's time to get to stepping. That every place your feet possess, that you have to give God praise. I stop by to let you know that God is stepping on the seat. And I want somebody to know today that God is moving on your behalf. That what you thought was impossible, God said I'm making it happen. See, I come to let somebody know that you must give God glory in spite of your situation. God said live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that owes God a praise? See, the enemy tried to stain you, but I come to let you know that your success is proven in God. See, the enemy tried it last year. He may have tried it last month, 
but it's about 10 people in the sanctuary that will shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Is there anybody that owes God a praise? I've come to let you know when the enemy comes in, God said, praise me on a promise. See, I've come to let you know when the enemy tries to throw a stain on your situation, when he tries to throw a stain on your success, Deacon Howard, he told me to let you know that he has a solution. See, when we have stains on our clothes, how many use a solution called shout? Is there anyone that sees a stain and you have to shout it out? I need about 10 people that will shout with the voice of triumph. He told me to let you know that you have the solution. The solution is to shout. I need about 10 people that will stand and give God good praise. See, the enemy, he's trying to attack you, but the Bible lets us know that greater is he that's in you, that's in this world. Are there any of us in this place that are champion praises today? He told me to let you know that he tried to stain your character. He tried to stain your body. He tried to stain your finances. But here is the solution. I need about 10 people to shout it out and give God good glory. I've come to let you know that it was only on the Good Friday when Jesus, he said, I stepped in. It was early on a Good Friday when they hung him high and stretched him wide. He said, I stepped in. It was early on a Good Friday when he stood in between life and death. And he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I've come to let you know that early on a good Friday, he saw you and he saw me. He said, I will step on the scene. They crucified our Savior. And all day, on Saturday, and all night, on Saturday, he said, I will step in for the sins of the world. All day, on Saturday, he reminded the enemy that I got this. You tried to attack them, but you did not know that he was the savior of the generations. And then early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his head. He said, I stepped in. Depression cannot have you. Stress can't take you out. Weariness can't wound you. Because Jesus, he's on the scene. I know you thought it was over, but I come to let you know that the best is yet to come. Clap, 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 clap. Clap, 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 clap. Clap, 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 clap. Give God good praise. Oh! When Jesus stepped in, when Jesus stepped in, when Jesus stepped in, there's a praise right there. There's situations that you couldn't handle. Somebody needs to tap into that. He said, don't worry about it. 
instead of, instead of worrying, I need you to worship. Instead of panicking, I need you to praise me. Lazarus, Mother Dr. Reed, he was dead in the natural. But Jesus said, I'm not sweating it. <laughs>